praise him so much for his blessings. I praise him because he gives me peace. I thank him because he is a, a great and wonderful God. You know, he just, he looks after us each and every day. You know, the word said, if God be for us, who can be against us? And, you know, God is for us. He is absolutely for us. I just thank him today and I praise him. I don't know. Now, if you could uh, just lift your hands today and give God just a few seconds of your time. Oh, God. Thank Heavenly you. Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, Mighty God, I come to you. Thank you and I praise you, Lord, for your mercy oh, and your grace and your goodness. I ask, Lord Jesus, that you would bless this word today, Lord God. Bless this word, Lord Jesus, as it goes forward. Give us ears to hear your word and a heart to receive your word. Open up our eyes of understanding, Lord God. Help us, Lord Jesus, that we might receive something God, from you today. Lord, that we might draw closer to you. Lord, that we might lift you up. Lord, your word says if you be lifted up, all men will be drawn unto you. Lord, help us that we might have a God consciousness. Lord, that we might, Lord Jesus, have our minds set like yours. Truly, I thank you, Lord, and I praise you. I ask that you bless the word and bless your people. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. You know, sometimes you have you have scriptures that just open right up to you and you just have complete understanding and, and you can just hit up here and you can just, the word is so strong, you just know it. I've struggled with getting a message for today because I've had several, but this morning at 7 o'clock when I woke up, all I could think of was a God consciousness. Do we have a God consciousness? The world that we live in today, it's hard to have a God consciousness. Now, our own, our own conscience, our own human flesh, we say, well, I have a good conscience. Well, you know what? You can sear that. You can sear Amen. that conscience. You can, you can change. I spoke with my daughter the other day. We were talking about changes in the world, things that are going on in the world. And you look at America, and you, you see the changes in America how you know our forefathers fought for what we have, the freedom. You know, they fought for these things. And she said, I don't understand how things change. Why do things change so fast? Why is it okay for this one day and not okay the next day for this? I don't understand why how this possible. How is it okay for the government to steal from me <laughs> and it's okay, but they send innocent people to prison because they can't pay a tax. You know? There's just different things that go on, and, and you just wonder. And I said, you know, things change because our lives change. When circumstances in our life change, we have to do, and I've heard Pat say this a hundred times, when circumstances in our life changes, our thought process changes. You know, uh, from when he was a child, if you were divorced, if you got divorced, you was thrown out of the ministry. <coughs> If you were divorced, you are, your hope of a ministry was gone. You could forget about ever ministering anywhere because if you were divorced, you were an outcast. It was gone. Until the preacher of that church's son or daughter gets divorced. <laughs> Amen. When the pastor of that church has a son or daughter that gets divorced, somehow now I have to make a way for Johnny or Susie or whoever. And these are my pastor's words. I've heard him say it a hundred times. You know, i got to make a way for Johnny, or I've got to make a way for Susie. Because now Johnny's got divorced, and I, oh, I want, Johnny's got a good ministry. I heard him. Johnny's ministry is wonderful. How can I cast Johnny out? Because, you know, because sometimes, sometimes we get so wrapped up in traditions of men, we forget about the will of God. And it doesn't come to our understanding until we're confronted with it. When you're confronted with something, you have to do something about it. And I said so many times, and it goes two ways. It goes two ways. Either we are now willing to listen to God because it's affecting us, or we just want Johnny to be saved. We just want Johnny to do what? Johnny may be the worst preacher in the world. He has absolutely no God in him at all. But I want Johnny to be a preacher. So I'm going to make a way for Johnny to be a preacher. We make changes because of circumstances in our lives. Well, I don't like this. 
I don't like that. I don't want this in here. I, I, want, I want this part of the Bible. I don't want that piece. This one's too hard. Let me go. I don't like this one either. Throw that one out too. It's too hard. I don't like that. I don't like this one. I don't like that one. Oh, I like this one. I like the one that says, By his stripes I am healed. By his stripes I am healed. I heard a minister this morning say, How many times do we make... Um, we make arrangements with God over things. You know, we we kind of try to try to bribe God. You know, you get sick in your body and you say, "Oh God, if you just heal me today, I'll serve you all the days of my life. If you'll just heal me today." I like I like that scripture. That's a good one. I like that scripture. I think I'll keep that one. By His stripes I am healed. Now there's other ones in there that says. <laughs> When you see your brother in a fault, when you see your brother in a failure, you lift him up and you pray for him. You pray for him. But sometimes his failures, we don't like. Ah, he's just an old drug addict. He's had, he's had a thousand chances. He's had a thousand chances. Why should I give him another chance? It's not up to you to give him another chance. It's not up to you. Right. It's not up to you to pick and choose the things that you like or don't like what Johnny's doing or what oh. Susie's doing. What's up to you is to go to God and say, Lord, my brother's in a, in a bad place. My brother's in a bad place. My sister's in a bad place. Make a way for them, Lord. Make a way for them. Make a way. Circumstances change in our life. And I was speaking with my daughter, and, and she said, you know, Mom, I have been against abortion for as long as I have been alive. I have been against abortion. But I'm telling you right now, if my child was to become pregnant, I don't know what I would do at this time. I don't know what I would do at this time. I don't know. It depends on the circumstances and what's going on. I don't know what I would do. Well, we were confronted with that at one time. My daughter was 16, and she got pregnant. And Man, it was not a good way of getting pregnant. It was just a bad, bad deal. And we didn't, you know, and she was sick and she was in the hospital and they were just, I mean, constantly having to take her to the hospital because she, uh, uh, she was vomiting continuously and just never stopped. And she would take her to the hospital. And, and Tim and I said, you know, if there was ever a time that I had thought about abortion, the thought would be now. Because if I had to choose between my child living, between my child living, and 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 or or taking this baby, and, and you know, so many thoughts go through your head, and you don't think you would ever think those things. You don't think you would ever do that, but you don't know what you would do until you're at that place. You don't know what you would do. Because when you're in that place, you have to make a way. The circumstances in our life change the way we think. Now, a God conscious person would still say, Lord, I gotta hold fast to your word no matter what. I have to hold fast to your word no matter what. We endured, we endured that thing, and it was bad, and she was in the hospital, and out of the hospital, and in the, and she couldn't go back to school because she was so sick, they put her on bed rest for three months, and she had to have schooling at home just in order to get through school, and it was a trial. But I can tell you this, the child that she has is the most wonderful, Hallelujah. sweetest Thank kid. Thank you, Lord. Her life is not where I want her to be. Her life is not where I want her to be, but her life is between her and God. I tell her what I believe and how I believe. She knows how I believe. I love her. She was just over. She gave me a, a she let me get a copy of, she got a letter from the, uh, the school. She was on the, the dean's list and she was on the chancellor's list. She got a, a thing from the chancellor of, of, of her grade point and how excited they were. And, and uh, when she started to go to school, she had letters from every school you could imagine trying to get her to come there. Because she's such an intelligent, intelligent, beautiful girl. 
the choices that she's making right now, I do not agree with. But that does not make me stop loving her. That does not make me stop loving her. Now, there was a time, I will tell you, there was a time I would have stood against that no matter what. I would have stood against her way of life. Oh, my. Circumstances change the way you feel about things. When your son is put in prison for child molesting, wow. When your son has been put in jail for murder, when your son or your daughter has done something, what do you do? You have to try to make a way. That's where the grace of God comes in. That's where the grace of not accepting what has happened as okay, but that the love of God covers. Because you know what? There is no big and little sin in God. There is no big and little sin in God. To us, I'm just being honest, murder, rape, and child molesting, it's here. Lying and stealing, mm, yeah, we all do it for the bit. We all do it, you know, it's just part of life. We all do it. <coughs> We all do a little bit, honestly, I've said this a thousand times, if you come up to me and you say, don't you just love my new shoes? And you go, oh, man, it's the ugliest thing I ever saw. <laughs> you don't say that. You don't look at them and go, man, them are ugly. You know, Jennifer, my mom does me like that. And I'll say, yeah, that's what you like. And she knows that I don't like I will say, I will say, well, I can tell you they're interesting. That's, I mean, they're different. They're definitely different. They're interesting. You know, I'm not going to go, oh, I just love them because they're ugly. They're just ugly. I'm going to ask you, who's they better? Oh, I don't even see that. You would tell me what you want to hear. I can't hear My point is, we, we, as human beings, as circumstances come our way, tend to change. God never changes. God never changes. But you, isn't it amazing how when you're confronted in your own life, how you see through different eyes. You see through different eyes when you're confronted with it yourself. It's easy to believe for someone else's healing. I'm telling you. I can pray and believe that Sister Carolyn is going to be completely and totally healed. God is not a respecter of persons. God can do it. Going to heal her, raise her up. And I have no doubt. But when you get up out of the bed and your foot goes, oh, oh my gosh, I can't even walk today. It's hard to say, okay, God. By your stripes I'm healed. This pain does not exist. This pain does not exist. Because when you're confronted with it yourself, it's different. I'm so glad for the grace of God. His grace and His mercy gives me the ability to look through rose-colored glasses. Because that's how He sees us, is through the blood. Jesus sees us through the blood. If he did not, he could not see us. Do you understand that? He could not see us because he cannot look upon sin. But he doesn't look at our sin. He looks through the veil. He looks through the rose-colored glass. And he says, there's my child. There's Jennifer. Man, has she made a bunch of mistakes. What were those mistakes now? What were those mistakes now? You see, oh, that's right, she don't have any. She doesn't have any. Now, men are not so nice. <laughs> Mankind will remind you continuously of all the bad things you've ever done, and some will never let you live it down. And some will even spread the word so that others won't let you live it down. Can you imagine? I'm using a pastor today because... To me, he is such a wonderful example of love and mercy and grace. Amen. When he came back to Martinsville, people shook their heads. Oh, my 
Can he actually think? Does he actually think God is going to bless him? The rumors and the stuff that flew around this town. I remember I was at a different church at that time. And I remember them coming and saying, Oh, that Pat Davis. Yeah. I'm telling you what, don't you go nowhere around that place. I didn't know who Pat Davis was. I had no idea who he was. I knew he'd been the pastor of that church down there at one point in time. I knew that he'd made some mistakes, but I didn't know anything about him. Because you know what? I just, if you know anything at all about me, you know that I don't want to know anything bad about you. That's right. That's right. Don't call me and tell me so and so doing something because I don't want to know about it. Because you know if so and so is doing something, then you need to go to God and say so and so is doing something. You don't need to go to different people in the church and say, Amen. did you hear? Amen. Did you hear about so and so? Brother Mark, I'm telling you what, you wouldn't believe the things I heard. I heard. I heard. I heard. I heard. I heard. Now, the word, of, the word of God says, be careful that you do not devour one another. God does not want that. God does not want that. But when, 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 when Brother Pat and Sister Daisy came back to this town, oh my, were the rumors flying. And then I was told, do you know how bad he is? He lets Ronnie to me on the platform and he's a drunk. Oh my Lord. He is a drunk. And he lets him on that platform and he lets him play and he lets him sing. Oh my. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? And then just different things were being said. And oh my. Just stay away from there. Stay away from there. I don't even know him to begin with. Yeah. <laughs> Um, we heard about that speaking this because we all know Sister Betty is the same way, but yet she let her pat on the back of the play because it's, it's why it's thinking. You know, if, if you want to fish, you got to get God consciousness. God consciousness. Not a man's consciousness, not as our thinking would be, because when Brother Pat came back, he said, he said he was crying and praying and praying and, and, and down on his face. And God said, what would you have me give you, son? What would you have me give you? And he said, mercy, Lord. Mercy. Give, me mercy. Yes. give me mercy. Give me mercy. Give me mercy. Because he wanted to look at others the way God looks at us. Amen. And he didn't listen. He didn't listen. He did not take heed to the stuff that people were saying because he knew that God wanted him right here. Amen. And I had a girlfriend that, that uh, she was everything that she wasn't supposed to be. <laughs> I was in a strict Pentecost church that you couldn't cut your hair or wear pants or smoke cigarettes or, or overeat. And everybody overeat. <laughs> you weren't supposed to do any of these things. Because if you smoked and if you cut your hair and you wore pants, you were going to hell. That's all there was to it. If you cut your hair and smoked cigarettes and wore pants, you were going to hell. There was no two ways about it. Now you could backbite and just destroy other people with your mouth and nobody thought a thing about it. I'm just being honest here. I'm not trying to be mean. And, and Jared, please don't ever put this on TV. Because <laughs> uh, I know a lot of people really mad at me. It's going. But truth is true. It's going. Man. Sorry on Facebook. I'm telling you, there was no grace. But I will tell you that when things came their way and they were faced with certain things, when circumstances changed in their lives, amazing how things changed. Because when circumstances come your way, you make allowances and you allow God to come in and open up your eyes of understanding. Amen. Brother Pat did not listen. And people would say, Brother Pat, you know that Ronnie's yeah, drinking. I mean, come on. I mean, he smells like a brewery when he comes in here. You, you know it. And Brother Ronnie stood and said himself, Amen. I would have a six pack or a 12 pack in the back of my car when I came to church. And the second I got two blocks away from the church, I opened it up and I'm drinking. I'm on my way. Yeah. He was drinking. It wasn't that Brother Pat didn't know he was drinking. He knew it. 
Yes. But God said, mercy. mercy Lord. Have mercy. Because you never know at what time and what hour things are going to change in their life. December the 3rd, 19... I don't remember. 88. 88? 1988, yeah. December the 3rd, 1988, God delivered him. But I want you to understand, if, if Brother Pat had not listened and not came to this town, if Brother Pat would have listened to all the people, he would not have done what God told him. But he chose to listen. God consciousness. A God consciousness. It doesn't matter what it looks like. It doesn't matter what it seems. It doesn't matter what people say. I have to follow the will of God. Amen. Because if I follow the will of God in the end, ultimately, it's going to be okay. It doesn't matter what people think. It doesn't matter what people say. Because when God looks down, he doesn't go. I remember on December the 1st, 1988, he was a drunk. No, I doesn't remember that. You know what God says? December the 3rd, 1988, Ronnie Chubby was delivered. Yeah. He was delivered, and you know what? He was as saved on December the 1st as he was on December the 4th. Yeah. Right. Salvation was not any different. Right. He had a failure in his life that he was trying to overcome, and he overcome because someone was willing to listen to God Amen. and have grace and mercy and allow God to work. Amen. We, as humans, sometimes don't want to wait. We want to just pluck that chair right out. You know, there was a, 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 a story, a scripture of a man, and, and he planted, he, he sent his, his servants out and they planted the field, I, and, and he got up the next day. Not only was the weed up, but there was tears everywhere. Weeds everywhere. And they said, Master, I thought you sowed good seed out there. And wasn't that good seed? And he said, Yes. But why are there tears? Why is there problems there? Let us go out and just yank up them tears. And he said, No, 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 no. Leave the weeds alone. You know, I was going to go work on my flower garden today. Maybe I'm not. <laughs> Leave the weeds alone. Because one thing, do you know that if you plant a seedling, if you plant a seedling and it comes up and it's little, and a little piece of grass grows up beside it, do you know if you go pluck that grass out, that seedling's going to come, because it has no roots. Right. There are no roots to that seedling. You have to wait till it gets rooted and grounded. And then God will pluck those things off. You just have to be very, very careful how you do it. Amen. If you do it when it's a baby, when you do it when it's teeny tiny, when you pull that blade of grass out, that seedling's going to come right out with it. But if you wait till that, that seedling gets some good ground, it gets, gets rooted in there, and it gets held tight, you can go in there and very, very carefully, very, very carefully, remove that blade with the root, and that plant will flourish and grow. Leave the tears alone, Amen. because God will surgically remove them in a proper time. In the right time, God will move in and He will take it out. But He wants to wait till they're rooted and grounded. You can't expect a baby. You know what? I do child care. I have babies that walk at nine months. I have babies that walked at 12 months. I had a baby that didn't even crawl till he was 12 months. And walking up, he was. That, that's what he did. You tried to you'd stand him up and his little legs to do this. It's like, okay. And so you just work with him and you work with him. And you know what? I think he was like 15 months old before he walked. My grandsons were almost 16, 17 months. Because they had rolls on the rolls on the rolls on the rolls. And they looked like this. They looked like, you know, like the Pillsbury Doughboy. When they would walk, they would kind of walk like that. I want you to understand. Babies are not the same. Now, the one little baby that I had, he was teeny tiny. I had a baby, I'm not kidding you, at three months, could crawl faster than you could walk. And he did a swim crawl. Crazy. He lay, and he did this, put his arm down, and flipped himself over him, flipped himself over him, flipped himself over him. Wow. And he didn't crawl on his hands and knees. Uh -huh. He took his hands and would flip his entire body forward. 
and he looked like a seal. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> and I'm not kidding at three months he could crawl faster than I could walk and we were all amazed oh my gosh and his name was Matthew I'll never forget the child he was just so different amazing amazing how could he do this I don't know we're not all the same it takes different things in our lives to get us to where we're going he just crawled like a little seal and got where he wanted faster than I could get you most, wow. all, most of the time. It was amazing. Then I had babies, 12 months, I'm sticking their little, uh, in, little bottoms in here, come on, you can do it. And they stand and they rock and they rock and they rock and they fall down. <coughs> and they rock and they rock and they rock and they fall down. It's like, okay, you can do this. And I can see God looking down on us. He looks down on us and it's like, you can do this. You can do this. You can do this. Come on. Come on. Get up there. You can do it. You can do it. You can do it. Some of us are seals and some of us are rockers. <laughs> Not yet. I don't think it's. I'm going. I'm on my way. Here I go. I'm going. Here I go. I'm going to do it. Not today. Sorry. And the next day, God says, You can do it. You can do it. Come on. You can do it. Stand up there. Stand. Come, on. Come on. You can do it. You can do it. You can. And you go, not today. I used to be a dancer, Jim. Do you understand? We're not all the same. Amen. We don't all do things at the same time. We're not all like you. Thank God that one day, Brother Pat Davis said, Okay, Lord, I'll go. I'll go. The people aren't going to like it. The people aren't going to like it. But remember all, God said, I don't remember anything. Son, I don't remember anything. You go and do what I tell you to do. And different people, and my friend who I said cut her hair and smoked cigarettes and wore pants, and, 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 but every time she would come to my house, we would have the most magnificent talks about God. Amen. Her name was Sister Noreen. Amen. Many of you remember. I remember. And she was just, her heart was so full of God. And you would be in her presence and and, I mean, she would go away, and I would feel so ashamed because I'm standing in judgment of people that are not supposed to be this way. And I would say, God, how can I feel you as strong as I do, and others say she's bound for hell? How is that possible? Wow. And then my mother-in-law at that time began to open her eyes to the mercy and grace of God. Hallelujah. And how God does not look on the outward appearance, but he looks upon the heart. And I began to listen, and I began to, to take heed to what she was saying. And little by little, different ones <coughs> left that church. They left the church. And I remember the day that I left. <clears throat> because I was seeing all these changes. And how, again, circumstances came my way. Sure. Do you understand? Circumstances came my way. What I was taught at that time, I believe because that's all I saw. Amen. But then when I saw that God can use whoever God can use, Amen. whoever is willing and open. That's a new bottle, right? <clears throat> that's a new Thank you. Thank you. Whoever is willing, whoever's heart is willing, this is what God's looking for. Amen. God's looking for a willing, open heart. Yes. Amen. That's what He wants. Amen. And I remember the, the day sitting in the front pew and it was in Sunday school and I went up and I just prayed and my eye was heartbroken and God what do you want me to do because the service before I had been there I went and prayed and God said is my death in vain can you now save yourself are you saved by your own works was my death in vain and oh then I'm contemplating because now circumstances are my way what am I going to do with this word that I've received are you saved because of your works? Are you saved because I gave my life, my blood was shed for you? What are you going to do with this? And I remember that Sunday morning when they opened it up, I opened it up to Samuel, and he was looking for the next king. And he went to Jesse's house and went through all of his sons, not this one. And he looked and he said, surely this is the one. Look at his height. Look at his stature. <coughs> Listen to his voice. This surely is a man of God. Because he looks perfect. And God told him, no, 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 no. 
I do not look on the outward man, but on the heart of a man. And he said, ask him if he has another. And he said, do you have another son? Well, you have that David. That, he's just a kid. He's not, I mean, he's just a kid. Nobody would have picked David as the king. Amen. No one. That's right. But God told me right then, I do not look on the outward man, but on the inward heart. Oh, That's what I'm looking for, oh, is the heart. And I went to the altar and I prayed and I prayed and I prayed and I prayed and I prayed. And I, prayed. I don't want to go, I don't want to go, I don't want to go. I don't. You know, this is my family. A lot of them were my family. Right. And God said, choose you this day who you will serve. Amen. And so when I was leaving, different ones hugged me. They knew I was leaving. I never said a word. But the Spirit told them. And I left because I had to hear God. Amen. I had to hear God. Amen. I had to listen to what He was telling me. When circumstances come your way, you have to do something with it. You have to either listen to men, or you have to follow after God. Amen. And sometimes we're not willing to change the way we think until we're hit with it. Face it, sometimes things come our way and we go, I don't like this. I don't like this. I'm not going to do it. If that, Georgian, if you just change your ways, you wouldn't have no problems. This is all Georgian's fault. Amen. She just brought this on herself. Amen. Amen. It's all Georgian's fault. She brought it all on herself. Bless her, Lord. And then God will say, <laughs> Then the same thing happens to you, and you go, Oh, God, I didn't have anything to do with this. It wasn't me. I didn't do it. Amen. I promise I'm innocent. Oh, God says, Uh-huh. Sometimes we're not willing to see things for our brother until it happens to us. And then when it happens to us, we have to do something with it. Because now, now you know. Now you know what happened. Back to his brother Pat. If he had, had listened to the rumors, if he had listened to what people said, yeah. even people in his own congregation, yes. people in his own congregation came to him and said, no, I don't think you should be doing this because, of, you know, this really is not God. This is not, I just feel like this is not God. And he'd say, okay, I hear you. I'm glad you came and talked to me. And he did what God told him to do. Amen. Many times he was confronted by people. Amazing. And I went home 
that wasn't too bad. It's not too scary. And I came back and went away. And I came back and oh my gosh, I couldn't leave. Yeah. Then I called my sister Valerie. <laughs> God put, God put me here, and, and, and he's never put me anywhere else. He brought me out of that, and he put me here with an understanding of who he was. And Sister Val, I said, Sister Val, I said, oh, yeah, Val, Val, you got to come. you got to come. Just, just come listen. So she came, and she's like, because, see, she always loved the spirit. But she said, I just can't get with them tradition stuff. So I just don't understand cutting my hair and wearing pants is going to make a difference. And so she came and she listened and she listened and when she she'd say, Gil, I don't understand. How come everybody doesn't want this? Why doesn't everybody want this? You get the fullness of God without all the yapping of people. That's what she said work too. It was amazing how God changed. He changed my life, he changed her life, he changed our children. Because one man listened. Each and every one of our lives have been touched in such a great way. Because he listened. Because you know what? Sometimes you just have to push people away and have a God consciousness. Okay, Lord, what is it that you want me to do? What do you want me to do? Not what do people want me to do. Not what... Because you know what? I can interpret this word any way I want to. I can turn it, and I can twist it, and I can bend it, and I can make it say anything you want. You know how I know this? Get on the internet and put in a subject. Put in a biblical subject. Adultery. Put in adultery on the internet. And you will come back with thousands of different views of what the Bible... And they'll use the exact same scripture and turn it to fit exactly what they want to say. I'm telling you, you can interpret this word any way you want. If you want to bend it and twist it, you can. And many, many times we bend it and twist it to fit our circumstances. Because that's what makes us feel good. Adultery? Throw it out there. I don't want to talk about that anymore. I don't like that one. Because everybody has an interpretation. Adultery? If you've been married and you're divorced and you marry somebody else, you're an adulteress, you're done. Yeah. It's over. You have no life. Well, I'm done. I have no life. <laughs> I've been married and divorced and, 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 and married again. And I'm, yeah, I've been widowed and, and married again. and I'm done. As far as the world's concerned. Then there are others out there that say, marriage? You don't have to be married. If you're married in the eyes of God, that's all that matters. If you're married... I'm telling you, you can turn it any way you want. That's right. And I'm not here to judge anybody. That's, right. That's not my job. It's not my job to judge anybody. You know what my job is? To give the word as God gives it to me, as I see it. I may not see it the same way Sister Daisy sees it. I may not see it the same way Sister George Ann sees it. I may not believe like Brother Tim believes. Now, he's my husband. And there's a lot of things we don't agree on. <laughs> Surprising. How about that? <laughs> Two people that do not agree 100% on everything. Really? <laughs> if you don't agree on everything, one of you would be a lot. <laughs> we don't agree on everything. We don't agree on how to handle everything. Sometimes he's the one that wants mercy, not the one that wants to punch him in the face. Sometimes I'm the one that has mercy, and he's the one that wants to punch him in the face. I'm being honest with you. Is that not life? Yeah, that's right. It's all in how you see it. And when circumstances come your way, you have to do something with it. Either you look through the mercy eyes of God, or you look through the judgmental eyes of men. Uh, it's, the Bible says, judge not lest ye be judged. And in how you meet it out, it will be met unto you. So when I look at people and I see my brother and sister, and I know for a doubt that they're in a fault and a failure. Their lives are spiraling out of control. <laughs> it is not up to me to go up and slap them and say, knock it off, straighten up. It's my job to say, oh, Heavenly Father, Jesus, you 
see they're out of control. Lord, you've got to make a way. And if you can give me words that will encourage them, help me, Lord. Because sometimes you can go to people and you can say, listen, I'm here for you. I'm here for you. Whatever you need, just talk to me. If you need somebody to talk to them, I'm here. Just, you know, open yourself up to them. Because sometimes that's all they need is a kind word. That's what God wants for them. When circumstances come your way, you have to make allowances for it. God never changes. Never. His word is His word. His word is His word. And the one thing that He says is kindness, mercy, love. I'm going to read through this real quick. I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that you walk worthy in the vocation wherewith you are called, with all lowliness and meekness, with long sufferings, forbearing one another in love. Do you understand that? Forbearing in love. That long suffering thing. Whew, that's what God wants for us. He wants us to understand that when circumstances come your way, you become a lot more long suffering. When circumstances hit you in the face, you became a lot more understanding. Endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. God wants His children to have peace. There is one body and one Spirit, even as you are called, and one hope of your calling. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. One God and Father of all, who is above all, and through all, and in you all. But unto every one of us is given grace, do you understand that? But unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. He gave his life for you and I. He gave his life for you and I. Are you willing to give your life for your brother? Sometimes shutting your mouth is giving your life. Sometimes not judging. Sometimes not standing against his person. Sometimes it's giving your life. Wherefore he saith, when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. <clears throat> I'm going to skip down. And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Till we all come in the unity of the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of God. We're not perfect yet, people. We have not made that place. None of us are perfect. He's still working on me. I'm still a project. He still takes me every now and then on that table and goes, splat, let's start again. Starts molding me again. He's that potter. And every now and then I'll get a crack in me and, and he starts molding me again. Trying to perfect me and then all of a sudden I'm starting to wobble, wobble, wobble. You ever see anybody that does this? And they go, Start over again. One day, one day he's going to look out and he's going to look at his church and he's going to say, okay, today's today. They're perfect. This, they're everything I ever wanted them to be. Now I'm taking them home. <laughs> now I'm taking them home. Because when you are in that place of perfection, he's just going to take you on home. We don't understand. Sometimes it's uh, one day, sometimes it's a hundred. Sometimes it's 50. We never know. But we're in that perfect place. When we are we're at where God wants us to be, that's when He can take us away. None of us are perfect. Some of us will go by the way of the grave, and some of us will go into rapture. But we're not going anywhere until He's done with us. That we henceforth be no more children, tossed to and fro, and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness whereby they lay in wait to deceive, but speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things which is the head, even Christ. Listen, when circumstances come your way, you have, to, you have to change things. And God will allow things to come your way so that you will change things. Things come our way. God wants you to have a God consciousness. If Brother Pat Davis had said, I am not going back to Martinsville, I know how the people think about me, there's no way it's not happening, where would we be? If he had listened to the rumors and said, <coughs> you know what he's doing. He lets those ungodly people on that platform. 
He lets anybody up there. He'll just let it, if he listened and said, I'm sorry, Brother Ron, you can't be on this platform. People complain about the smell of alcohol, you just can't be up here. You're smoking cigarettes, you can't be up here. If he had said, no way, you're not, where would he have been? We would have lost one of the most wonderful ministers. I have heard him sing, I have heard him preach, and his ministry was amazing. And he touched many souls. How many people here today, right now, your life was changed because one man listened and followed after God? Amen. I want you to understand, you are going to be that one person that one day someone's going to look up and say, because Sister Thelma Edwards said these things to me, because she allowed me to see God in her life, because Sister Jenny is such a meek and wonderful person, I, I saw God in her. Amen. Changes have made. Just like we're looking today and we're saying, oh, thank God that Brother Pat listened. His ministry is still going on today. I'm sure when he is in that in that nursing home, I'm sure he's still telling people about God. Oh, yeah. I'm sure he's still communicating with God in a massive, wonderful way. It is amazing what God can do if you will allow him. Sister Carol. Doors closed. unto each and every one of us. This word will live in my life. This word will live in my life because I was taught mercy. God wants us each and every one to hear his voice today. I know the trials of the world sometimes just press down on you and they want to convince you that right is wrong and wrong is right. But just have a God consciousness today. Don't worry about the ways of the world. Listen to God. Because I want you to understand, you only give account to God for what you do. What you do, how you handle situations. Listen to God today. He is an awesome God.